Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here to start you on the journey of integrating functions with more than one variable. Here we're going to give you an introduction to iterated integrals. This is similar to partial differentiation, where we integrate with respect to one variable but treat the other variable or variables as a constant. Let's look at an example here. We have the integral of x squared plus 2xy minus y squared, all integrated dx, so we're integrating with respect to x, meaning we're treating y as a constant. So if we look at our first term, we would just do this like normal. We are integrating dx, and we have a term only with x, so power rule applies here. Our integral of x squared, the power goes up by 1, and we divide by 3. In the next term here, we have 2xy. Notice that the 2 and the y are considered constants since we're integrating with respect to x. So thinking about just integrating x and then multiplying what we get by 2y at the end, integrating x, power rule would give us x squared over 2. That over 2 is going to reduce the 2 in the front of our term there, and we'll get x squared y. For our last one here, notice that this minus y squared is just a constant. So integrating negative y squared dx we would just multiply in an x and get negative x y squared. Lastly, we'll need a constant term. But now notice that we are integrating dx, and things that are considered constant terms in our function would be constants as we usually think of them, and also any term that just has a y in it. So not only can we just have a plus c, but we might also have other terms that are considered constant because they only have a y in them. Remember that when taking a derivative of a term gives us 0, that's considered a constant. And if a term only had y's and we took the derivative, that would be 0. So we'll just say plus some constant or plus some term that has only y in its expression. Let's look at integrating the exact same function dy now. So x squared is considered a constant. So if we integrate a constant, we just get that thing times y. So we get x squared y plus 2xy. Now the 2 and the x are considered multiplying by a constant. So it's really the y that we look at. Then we multiply by 2x at the end. So integrating y here, dy, would give us y squared over 2. And the over 2 will reduce with the 2. And so we'll simply get xy squared. For our last term here, minus y squared, integrating this dy would just be a basic power rule. The power goes up by 1, and we divide by the new power, so we get minus 1 third y cubed. Now we also have to add our constant of integration, so we say plus c, and since we're integrating with respect to y here, remember that taking the derivative of any term that only has an x in it would also have a derivative of 0, just like a constant, so we might also say not just plus some constant, but plus some constant and any equivalent expression involving only x. When we look at doing this process and actually iterating the integrals, in other words, taking an integral and then another integral, doing one at a time, these iterated integrals are also called multiple integrals. Here we have a double integral. You can see we have two integral signs. We have bounds on each, so this is a definite double integral. We have our function inside of the double integral, and we have dx dy. When we iterate a multiple integral, we work from the inside out. So this expression, double integral of 2 cosine y plus sine x dx dy, is to be done first with the inside expression as one integral. So we'll be integrating dx, in other words, treating y as a constant. So let's go ahead and first copy down our integral outside. We have integral from 0 to pi over 2. And then when we do the antiderivative with respect to x in here, then 2 cosine y is just a constant. And integrating a constant dx, we just multiply by x, so we get 2x times cosine of y, and then the antiderivative of sine x with respect to x would be minus cosine x. And our bounds we will plug in from 0 to pi, and now make note we integrated dx, so if we want to keep everything straight we could really say we're plugging in 0 for x and pi for x, so we don't get confused and plug things in for the wrong variable. Okay, let's go ahead and continue that. So we will have first our outer integral, 0 to pi over 2. And plugging in, we will get, plugging in pi for x, we'll get 2 pi times cosine of y minus cosine of pi minus, plugging in 0 for x, 2 times 0 times cosine y will be 0 minus cosine of 0. And then whatever we get from that, we will integrate dy. All right, continuing down from that then, 
we'll get the integral from 0 to pi over 2. Let's go ahead and clean this up a bit. We have 2 pi cosine y minus cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1 minus negative 1, so we get plus 1 minus 0 minus negative cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1 minus negative 1 would be like plus 1, so we get another plus 1 there. And we'll integrate that dy. Let's go ahead and clean that up. So antiderivative from 0 to pi over 2 of 2 pi cosine y plus 2. And now if you see the multiple of 2 and you want to bump that out front, you can certainly do that, of course. We're just going to go ahead and keep it. So now integrating with respect to y. So now we go ahead and say the antiderivative of 2 pi cosine y with respect to y. Well, the 2 pi, of course, is a constant, so the antiderivative of cosine y is just going to be sine y. So we get 2 pi sine of y. And then antiderivative of 2 with respect to y will be 2y. And we don't have any x's left. So I think the only thing to plug in for is y, but we can go ahead and say still just to be safe, y equals 0 and y equals pi over 2 for when we're plugging in things to be clear. And now plugging in these bounds, so y equals pi over 2, that will give us 2 pi sine of pi over 2, which would be 1, plus 2 times pi over 2, which would be another pi minus, now plugging in 0, we would have 2 pi times sine of 0. Sine of 0 is 0, so this first term would be 0. Plus 2 times 0 would give us another 0. So here I think you can see we get 2 pi plus pi minus 0, so we get an answer of 3 pi for this double integral, our first iterated integral here. Let's look at another. We have an iterated integral here, double integral. We have bounds. This is another definite integral. Our function in our integral is x squared plus 6y minus 3xy squared. We're integrating dy dx, so you notice this time we are integrating with respect to y first, taking that inside integral. So we'll go ahead and copy down our integral from 0 to 3 that we have on the outside, and we'll do that last. And so here now, integrating with respect to y first, integrating x squared, which is a constant, with respect to y, we would just multiply by y, so we'll get x squared y. 6y, if we integrate with respect to y, we'll get the power going up by 1, we'll get a y squared, we'll divide by 2, that would reduce the 6, so that will give us 3y squared. And then integrating 3xy squared, with respect to y, the 3x is a constant, so we just do power rule with y. y squared becomes y cubed over 3, and the over 3 will reduce the 3 here. So we'll get minus xy cubed. We will evaluate all of that from 1 to 2. And remember, we integrated dy, so we might want to say y equals 1 to y equals 2. And then we'll go ahead and integrate with respect to x after that. So let's plug in our y bounds first. We'll leave our 0 to 3. And now plugging in y is 2, our first term will be 2x squared plus 3 times 2 squared, 3 times 4 there, that will give us 12. Minus x times y cubed, y cubed would be 8, so we would get minus 8x. Minus, now we'll plug in y equals 1, so plugging in y equals 1, we will just get x squared plus 3 minus x. All right, and we'll take the antiderivative of all that once we clean it up, dx. Integral from 0 to 3 and combine any like terms that we have. So we have a 2x squared minus an x squared. We'll just call that x squared. I have an x here. I have minus negative x, so that's plus x. That'll be a minus 7x there. And then we have constant 12 minus 3, and that'll give us 9. We'll be integrating x squared minus 7x plus 9 dx from 0 to 3. Now this isn't so bad, right? Everything seems single variable from here. So we get then for this one, we get 1 third x cubed minus, we get 7 over 2 x squared, and we
we get plus 9x. And from 0 to 3 we will evaluate. Okay, and then evaluating our bounds, we will have, plugging in 3 first, we'll have 1 third times 3 cubed, which is 27, minus 7 over 2 times 3 squared, which is 9, plus 9 times 3, which is 27. And then plugging in 0, you'll notice in each term we would get 0, so we'll get minus 0 for this last part. So this will give us 9 minus 63 over 2 plus 27. And if we get a common denominator, that will be 18 over 2 minus 63 over 2 plus 54 over 2. And that will give us 72 minus 63, which is 9 over 2 for our answer here. Okay, so the important thing to remember is when you have an iterated integral, a multiple integral, here we're looking at double integrals, when you are integrating a function dx dy, you do the inside first. So first you will integrate the function with respect to x and plug in its bounds and then you will integrate the remaining expression with respect to y and plug in its bounds. If you're integrating a function dy dx, doing the inside first, you will integrate first with respect to y, plugging in y bounds, and then once you get that expression, you will then take the antiderivative with respect to x and plug in the x bounds. Okay everyone, hopefully this helps you read and start to calculate your multiple integrals. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.